Good morning, good morning, Crossroads. It's great to be in the house this morning with you guys. Let's praise the King. Defeat. 
much goodness and grace, yes, much more than I deserve, cause I know who I am, and I can't stay where I'm.
Amen, amen. Psalms 22, 3 tells us this. It says, he inhabits the praises of his people. And that's exactly what you feel what's happening in this praise. When we praise him, that's where he is. It brings his glory, his power. And then where God is, anything is possible. Okay? So whatever you came into this place with, no matter how big it feels or how small you think it's not important, he can do anything. Nothing is impossible where the spirit of the living God is. All right, so I want to pray over you, and if you need just, maybe it's a little tiny baby miracle, maybe it's a ginormous one that you see no way, just real quick, raise your hand up at me, just wave, it could be small, it could be little, I can see awesome, awesome, all across this place. Father God, we come before you. Lord, I thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people, and we acknowledge your presence and your power in this place. And God, I thank you that where you are, nothing is impossible. So for every hand that went up in this place, for every heart, God, that needs to know you are real, we ask your miracle working power to do what only you can do. God, heal hearts today. Lord, for the one who came in broken, uncertain, unsure if you're even real, God, I ask today you show up and touch their life. God, for every marriage, every financial need, every situation, every miracle that is needed, Lord, do what only you can do. Nothing is impossible with the power of the Holy Spirit. In your precious name, amen. Can you give him one more praise, church? Amen, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We are so honored to worship with you today. If you're a first time guest, we just wanna say welcome. Thanks for joining us, absolutely. And to our online crowd, thank you for joining us today as well. We love you all. If you're a guest with a first time, stop by our Welcome Center. We have a gift we just wanna give you and tell you we love you. Thanks for being here with us. Give your neighbor a high five. You may be seated in the house. Welcome to Crossroads. We are so honored you are joining us today. Please take a moment to silence your phones as we share some important things happening at CRC. If you're a guest, we want to connect with you. Please text NEW to 54244. That's NEW to 54244 and stop by our Welcome Center in the lobby for a free gift. Thank you for being here today. We invite you to partner with us in building the kingdom. To give online, simply scan the QR code on the back of the chairs, visit crcbelton.com slash donate, or you can text CRC Belton and the amount to 77977. To give in person, utilize our boxes in the back of the auditorium. The Lord is honored when we choose obedience and bring our tithe. We hope you'll join us next Sunday, May 5th, as we welcome guest speaker Toby Slough of Gobby Ministries for all three morning services. Gobby's goal is to help you find hope and freedom in the middle of rough waters of anxiety, depression, and the challenges of today's world. The same evening, we will host a Gobby School Parent Workshop on the topics of mental health and families from 5 to 7 p.m where you'll be equipped with practical tools and resources to help your family pursue mental wellness. The cost to register is $5, which covers the workshop and your parenting workbook. Childcare is limited and available on a first come first serve basis. So don't hesitate to register today at crcbelton.com events. If you're interested in having your child dedicated to the Lord in front of your family and friends, this is for you. We will have baby dedications on Sunday, May 19th, immediately following our 11.30 a.m. service. To register, visit crcbelton.com events, fill out the form, and one of our pastors will be in touch with more information. We value family here at Crossroads. If you choose to have your children in service, we ask that you're sensitive to those around you should your little one get restless. If at any point you need to take your child out of the auditorium, feel free to take advantage of our excellent children's ministry, our mother's room, or one of our live stream locations on campus. Our dream team is happy to assist. We are praying blessing over you this week. Now prepare your hearts to receive the word of God. Yeah, well, good morning, fam. Oh, this week's sauce. Good morning. All right. We're glad you're here today. Again, if you're a guest for the first time, 
Uh, we're so glad you're here. Uh, you missed the first service. We had some drama. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, the lights went out. Uh, but it was cool because everybody poured, uh, pulled their uh, iPhones out or other whatever phone you, it's not an iPhone. And, uh, and had our flashlights. It was fun anyways. Yeah, so many good things are happening. Um, next week, everyone say next week. So important. It's actually not Gobby, it's Gobi. Um, so one of my mentors, one of my pastors, world famous children's author, Toby Slough will be here speaking all three services. He's a mental health expert. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And uh, he speaks into my life. Again, he's one of my mentors. And I'm so excited to share him with you. Uh, he's pastored very successful churches. Um, and um, he's going to be coming and, and sharing uh, in all three services. But that, that evening or that afternoon at 5 p.m., if you're a parent uh, raising a kid, you need to be here. Child care is first come, first serve. Uh, but he's going to be doing a parenting workshop. Uh, he'll have his books, his kid, children's books, and, and all of his other things available. But I want you to be here. I really do. It, it's going to bless you. Um, Holly and I will be here. We want you to join us. We're going to have a really great time. And so I just want to make an extra push for it. Uh, it's a big deal for us to get him. It's hard to schedule him and book him because he literally travels the world every weekend. And so I'm just so, I'm so honored that he's going to be spending next weekend with us. So get here. It's going to be a lot, of, a lot, a lot of fun. Hey, this past Wednesday night, we had some wrestling, some wrestling, and uh, we got a video we want you to check out. We had so much fun. We'll bring it back. We'll do it again next year. They wanted to like pick me up and throw me on the ring and do this whole thing. And I was like, I like walking too much. I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to walk away from today. And they were like, no, it's called Pastor Saves the Day. And I was like, but do I need to? I don't, yeah. I, I, feel, like, I feel like I don't walk away if I do that. So we're like, next year we're going to get you there. But anyway, we had a good time. And thank you all the men that came and served. And I saw them putting that ring together, and I was like, there's, there's wood. That's, I don't want to do that. There's no padding, uh, literally. I was like, it's metal and wood. You guys do it. We're paying you to do it. So, <laughs> Father, we just thank you for this day. You've been so good to us. Uh, thank you for what you did at 9 a.m., certainly what you're doing here at 1015 and, and our next service to come. And for our online family, maybe those watching for the first time, the hundreds tune in every week. We're so glad, wherever they're watching from, uh, that they would feel the same spirit that we feel and here today, a bond of unity. And so I just thank you, Lord, that uh, we, you're moving in our midst, that we would be sober-minded today. We'd be alert and awake to what you are doing. And uh, speak to us through your word. Speak to us through me, through the power of your Holy Spirit today. And in Jesus' name we pray. And the church shouts, amen. Let's give Jesus a rowdy applause. He's worthy of it, amen. So we're concluding um, a series of conversations we've been having out of the book of Ephesians. As I've told you, Ephesians is just a great book on practical theology. It's Parenting 101, it's Marriage 101, um, and if you have never read the book of Ephesians, I would encourage you to. We're going to be reading out Ephesians chapter 6, I saved the best for last, I would say. Um, we're going to be talking about the armor of God and about spiritual warfare and, and those sorts of things. And when we, when we talk about, as we say in the South, spiritual warfare, when we talk about spiritual warfare, when we talk about the armor of God, sometimes people get a little kooky, all right? Sometimes people get like, you know, there's the camp where Satan's under every rock, 
uh, he's responsible for everything, and it's, you know, it's just Satan, I can blame the devil. And you have people in the other camp that Satan doesn't exist, or he's what you see in Hollywood, he's got a pitchfork and horns, and, you know, he kind of roams around, tries to spook and scare you. Today, I want us to land on the truth. And, and we're not going to, I don't want to spend too much time talking about him because he's not worthy of our time. But nonetheless, our Bible does tell us that you and I face a very real adversary, a very real enemy. Finish the sentence if you know it. Out of sight, out of mind. I say that because I think often in the Christian world, you know, like especially when things are going good in your life, if, if things are good at work, if things are good at home, if things are good with the finances, whatever it is. You know, the kids are behaving, maybe, sometimes. Like, we tend to be lulled into sleep, like, I'm not under attack, right? I'm not in battle because everything's good. And, and Satan would love nothing more than for you and I to kind of slip into that thought, like, oh, it's not a big deal, everything's going good. Because here's what you need to know about the enemy that you don't see. He sees you. And he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your marriage, your home, your career, your finances. Our Bible tells us this. He would love nothing more than to see you not fulfill God's work, and he would love for you to spend eternity with him. That's, that is his ultimate goal, is to pull as many people, as many of God's children from the cross into hell. And, and by the way, this morning, today, and every day, heaven and hell are both recruiting. There's room on both teams, church, amen? amen? So we get to choose which team we want to be on. Our one truth this morning is, whose armor is it? Whose armor is it? In Ephesians chapter 6, it's called the armor of? God. Armor of God. And so I want us to understand that it's not our armor. We don't own it. It's his. And he gives it to us so that we can live victoriously. As a pastor, one of the things that concerns me and one of the things that I pray uh, when I pray for you is that if you're a Christ follower, if you've come forward, you've, you've made a public declaration, you were baptized in water, which you need to be, um, is that you would, you would live victoriously. Amen? Listen, when I say that, here, here's what it, I'm not saying you'll never have a hard time in life. I'm not saying like when you come to Jesus, it's going to be rainbows and unicorns. You're going to have hard times in this life. I don't know what to tell you. Like buckle up, baby. It's, it's a roller coaster. There are highs and there are lows. And sometimes the lows seem a lot longer than the highs. It's a thrill ride, isn't it? Like you never know what's going to happen the next day. But even in the midst of chaos, God still wants us to live victoriously. And so one of my burdens is today that we understand that, that we, ha we know that even in trouble, even in hard times, we can live victoriously. We can have the peace of God in our home, even in trouble times. Amen. And so as we begin navigating our way to Ephesians chapter 6, you know, in this idea of spiritual warfare, I have some very close friends. Um, I never served in the military. And it's one of, my, one of my greatest regrets. I really mean that. I had wished I had served our country, and I never did. My grandpa did. He served in World War II and uh, was part of Normandy and that invasion. And, uh, but I have some friends in this church that, uh, our combat veterans who saw real action, witnessed brothers die. And so I messaged them in a group this week, and I said, if you could explain war in one word, what would you say? And here's some of the feedback I got. One said it was difficult. One said it was challenging. Another said consuming. One said bloody. One said hell. One of them said no one wins. And I was like, wow, that... It sounds like war. But here's, here's the thing about the battle that you and I are fighting. Someone does win. And actually someone has already won. And that is Jesus. <laughs> and so because he is victorious, you and I can be victorious. And here's what you need to know about the enemy that you and I face. Satan is a propagandist. Let me say it again. He's a propagandist. He has no real power, no real control over us. So he uses propaganda to spread his messages, much like our media does today. 
Can I get an amen on that one? Yeah. So my dad's dad, before he passed, we got him to sit down on video and asked him to share what he wanted to share about his time um, fighting in France and, and on to, into Germany. And uh, he, he talked about going from California to taking a train to Louisiana where he did basic training. And I took a train up to New York where they hopped on a Canadian cruise liner to sell them across the ocean. And I was like, what would you do for two or three weeks? And he's like, we smoked a lot of cigarettes and we played a lot of cards. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess that's what you do, right? Well, they, he's part of this invasion. They make their way through France and they go through West Germany, through Cologne and Heidelberg, and they're, they're marching with the Allied forces, fighting Hitler's army. And one of the things he said that stuck out to me, especially when I was preparing today for you, was he said that at night, um, and I forgot to tell the first service, it was in the evening, but at night, the, the Nazi forces would fly over the front lines of the Allied forces and drop leaflets. And the idea was that these allied forces, Americans and Canadians and everybody that's fighting, that, that they would see the, these leaflets, they would read these leaflets. And here's what he said to the best recollection, recollection he could remember was that, that, that it said, um, the war is almost over, you're losing, you should retreat. And when I thought about that and I remembered him talking about that, I was like, I know who else that sounds like. That sounds a lot like Satan. He's a propagandist. He drops leaflets your ways. He drops lies in our direction. And when we're weak, when we're hurting, when we're searching for answers, come on, somebody. Don't leave your boy hanging this morning up here. Let me me have way. When you're, when you're wrestling with God, he seizes these opportunities to drop propaganda. Things like, if God really loved you, where was he? Anybody ever had that one drop in your lap? Why didn't he heal your mom? Why didn't he solve that problem at work? Why didn't he touch that part of your fire? Are you with me today, family? Whatever it is, he drops this propaganda because here's what he knows that you need to know. If you're with me, say amen. amen. He has no real power over us. So he just drops them our way. And if we're picking it up and we're reading it, we'll start saying to ourselves, wow, the war is almost over and I'm losing. I should just quit and give up. He's telling some of you maybe watching online or in the room, take your life. No one will miss you. You don't matter. End it now. He's, it's propaganda. He doesn't want you in the game. He doesn't want you serving God. Every dad in here, listen to your pastor as a father. I believe one of the greatest epidemics that is affecting our nation and a re the fruit of it is men not showing up. I really believe it. The absence of godly manhood in every system of our, our culture. From, from Tell me I'm wrong. From, from government, from the, from the White House to the church house to your house. It is an epidemic now, not here at Crossroads. That's what I love about the men here. But, you know, other places. But if you're a, if you, seriously, if you're a dad, you better show up, sir, because if you don't, Satan will. And, and I, there's, you know, these parents that are hands off. If you don't want to raise your kids, dad, mom, no problem. The culture would love to. They would love to have your kids. They would love to indoctrinate your kids. Tell me I'm wrong. They're trying to do it right now. They would love to come into our schools, into our libraries, into our churches. And if you are hands off, don't worry. Satan's got you, baby. He'll raise your kids for you. But I challenge every dad in here, stand up. Be the man of God he's called you to be. Be waiting in the car for your family to get them to church on time. Let me say it again, on time, yeah, baby. <laughs> Just saying, donuts are fresher, the coffee's hotter. Amen. Are you with me today, dads? Yes. I love you. I'm not pointing your fin my finger at you. I'm in the same boat with you. But I'm just telling you, like, if you, if you want, the iPad can raise them too. Yes. 
just hand it over. Just, just release them, let them go. Or you can be a hands-on dad today. You can show your family like my dad showed us, even when they had to whoop us while we were praying. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> but they did it. And they, my dad be trying to kneel by the bed, make us pray, and John and I are just beating each other and pinching. Then they separate us, so then we reach across the bed while our heads are bowed. And my dad's trying to touch heaven, and I also at the same time, like, touching us, you know. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm praying, Jesus, help him. It's a whole thing. I'm working through this in counseling. <laughs> Come on, somebody, amen. Raise your kids is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and what? Say it with me. In his, his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, not just some of it. You got dressed this morning, and we're glad you did. You, you wouldn't have been allowed. We, we love you. We'd like, hey, we welcome everyone. And we'd be like, nope, you can't come in. You got to go put clothes on, then you can come. But yeah, you got dressed. It's, listen, when we don't put on the armor of God, it's like walking out your house undressed. You're just, you're, you're naked and afraid. Like, you're not going to make it. So put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, his, his plans. All right, lean, into me, lean in with me, church. For our struggle is not against, it, it's not against the people you share a roof with. It's not against people that believe politically different than you as well. Really, no amens on that one? It's just not, it, our, our war is not against one another, regardless of what you think. The, our, our battle is not against flesh and blood, all right? But we do have a battle. It's against the rulers, against the authorities and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. He says it twice, so that when, not if, but when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Everyone say that with me. Stand And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm again with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, say it with me, which is the word of God. I say it all the time, get into the word so the word gets into you. We have an epidemic in our churches, we call ourselves Christ followers, but we're so biblically illiterate. And when we're in a pinch, we're scrambling to find some kind of scripture to bring us an answer or solace, this is why you must be in the word every day. Every person in here, everyone watching online should have at least one life verse, one verse that anchors you, one verse you can always go to to bring you hope, to bring you joy, to bring you peace. You need something written and hidden inside your heart. Are you with me today, church? We gotta be in the word of God. Every parent, you need to be in the word of God. My goodness. Pastor Holly and I are about to enter a, a new, interesting season in our life. We have one adult child, and in like two months, we're going to have two adult children. And I'll be honest, that's a little scary to me. Uh, for those that have adult children, uh, to borrow from my friend, uh, Pastor Danny here, you're a consultant. By the way, only when asked. That, I'm just telling you, it's the truth. They will, they will let you know when they want your opinion. I'm just telling you. And, and it's right or wrong, good or bad, I don't know. And I was thinking about this new season we're into, and my son's getting ready to turn 18, and what that means and what that looks like. And, you know, as he's entering into a new season of manhood and all those things and this transition that he and I are walking through together, man to man and father to son and navigating these waters and having different conversations that we didn't have to have about, about life and about money and finances and planning. It's, it's different family. 
the different seasons of life, but I just say to every parent in here, no matter what season of life you're in, it's the same God in every season. So I rest assured as a dad with a daughter who lives in Austin or my son who's getting ready to turn 18, I rest assured because the same God that I prayed to when we were in the hospital with them is the same God that's with them today. The same God that was with us along the journeys. He hasn't changed. And what I tell you, parents, he's better in his hands than he is in ours. Our kids are better in in, in the hands of God than they are in our hands. We'll mess it up. But if we let God raise them, if if we come alongside and we, I just feel like I'm supposed to share this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't know who this is for, but one of the prayers that Pastor Holly and I prayed, and a a mentor gave this to us, it was not ours. And uh, it was a season of life where we were praying about some things uh, concerning our kids. And we were seeking counsel and wisdom from our friend. And he said, well, have you asked the Holy Spirit what he's doing in their life? And I was like, no, should I have done that? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. He said, ask the Holy Spirit, what are you doing in their life right now? Because he's doing something. He's already saying something to them. And so he said, your prayer now becomes, Lord, whatever you're doing in their life, I want to come alongside of it. I want to be a part of that. Are you with me, Dave family? I don't know who that's for. Receive that. Maybe someone online, but that wasn't in the script. That wasn't in the notes. John 10, 10 tells us this. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But what does Jesus say? I've come that you might have life and have it full or more abundantly. And here as Christ followers, we need to be living abundant lives. And listen, when I mean that, I don't want you to think cheese. I don't want you to think money. There are a lot of people that have money and have no peace, have no joy. There are a lot of people who are really wealthy and have a lot of things and are maybe living alone. Money doesn't solve a lot of problems. It might make them easier to go through, but it doesn't solve all the problems. But peace in your home, joy in your life. Are you with me today, fam? I think a lot of you would trade a lot right now to have some joy, to have some peace, to live an abundant life. Listen, Jesus did not die on a cross over 2,000 years ago so we could walk around wounded and defeated all the time. My goodness, he is the lion of Judah and the same spirit that dwells in him dwells in us, 1 John 4, 4. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Are you with me today, fam? That, that's for us. He that is in us is greater than him that is in the world, than the enemy that is in this world. Ephesians chapter six, verse four, we read this in week one when we were talking about relationships. Fathers, do not exasperate your children, and all the kids in the room said amen. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Proverbs 22, six tells us this. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not depart from it. They will not turn from it. Deuteronomy 6, when, when God is giving them the laws to live by, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. God was pretty serious about the word of God. He, he's really serious about us understanding it today, church. Are you with me? He, he's serious about us understanding and getting into the word of God and get, letting it get into us. One of the things that my wife did so well, especially when our kids were young and she's dressing them, gospel truth, I would hear her as she's, putting on their shoes, she would say, Lord, I pray that they would have the gospel of peace on their feet. And when she's putting their little shirts on, she would say, Lord, may they have the breastplate of righteousness today. And, and as she's putting their little belt together, and she would say, you know what, son, you know what, daughter, you have the belt of truth wrapped around your waist today. And she'd put a bow in Roxy's hair and put a cap on Harrison's head, and I would hear her literally say, and may the helmet of salvation be upon them today. When we leave today, if you have kids, if you have a teenager, 
It should not be where we're we going to eat today. The first thing you should be asking your kids, what did God say to you today? I want to know what, what happened in your service today. Or if your kids are like mine, they really don't like talking to you. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They really like talking to Holly. When they need money, guess who they can come to? Daddy. <laughs> come on, Dad, you know it's the truth. Yeah. Anyway, so, <laughs> by the way, your adult children still want money. Hey, Dad, you want some money I can borrow? Uh, <laughs> or you can lead off by saying, hey, I got to tell you what, what Pastor Matt talked about in church today. We talked about the armor of God. And are you with me, Dave Fam? We just said it. When you get up, we're supposed to be talking about it. When you lie down, we're supposed to be talking about it. I mean, does God have a seat at your table or not? Like, is he the last resort or is he the first option? What are we teaching our kids? Listen, we have to eliminate from our vocabulary, well, all I can do is pray. Are you kidding me? I was doing that a long time ago. That was my first option. Are you with me today, family? We don't forget about God and prayer and the word. That is our first option. We go straight to the word of God. Amen? 2 Corinthians 10 tells us this, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Now listen to this, don't miss this. On the contrary, they have what? Divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and everything uh, excuse me, in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Paul is wrapping up this, this letter in Ephesians. It was to the church in Ephesus, but many believe it was a letter written to the church at large. I think I told you last week, when Paul wrote Ephesians, he was not in Ephesus. He was most likely in Rome under house arrest. But he's writing this letter to this church at Ephesus and to the church at large. Um, when you are finishing something, it's called a conclusion. Everyone say conclusion. Right? You can't tell a story and leave your readers hanging. Right? Like he did, I guess, in 1 Corinthians. He's like, well, now we need the sequel. 2 Corinthians, Right? And verse of Second Timothy, but there wasn't a second Ephesians. It was this final letter. And Paul uses these words, as I read to you in Ephesians 6:10, finally, or I'm concluding this letter by saying this. It's like if you wrote a letter. Does anybody write letters anymore? I actually do. I love one of the, seriously, one of the greatest things I love doing throughout the week is writing handwritten notes to people in my congregation. There are a lot of you, so please be patient for me to try to write everybody. But when I know, when, I, some, when they tell me someone's in the sick or when someone's going through this, I, tr I do my best to try to write everybody a handwritten note. If you've ever received a handwritten note from me, you know I write like a serial killer. <laughs> and here's the sad truth. I really try. I try so hard, and I have terrible penmanship. Holly's is like circles and hearts and... You know, mine's like, you need the Holy Spirit for interpret. Can you interpret this? What, <laughs> what Pastor Matt? I think it says love, but I'm not for sure. Is that a O? Is that a U? Is, is it, it's a true story. But I'm telling you that because Paul's writing this, and he's, as we've gone through these, these few weeks reading through Ephesians, he's been talking about a lot of things, how to raise your kids, how to live a godly life. He's He's giving them theology about the deity of Jesus Christ in Ephesians chapter one. And he's talking about husbands and wives, how to love one another, again, how to raise your kids, he's, how to have relationship inside the church. And he's like, this is the last part of my letter. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's like he's saving the best for last. It's like he's like, hey, I wrote this beautiful letter to you and the last thing I need you to remember is this, you need to put on the armor of God today. Almost like saying, if you don't remember anything else, remember this, finally be strong. It's a conclusion. Hollywood knows this when they make movies, they're concluding their story, 
TV knows there's a conclusion that keep you watching until you see how it wraps up, how it finishes. And in this movie, in this TV series, in this letter we just read, here's the conclusion. And I think Paul has saved the best for last. I think about the book of Revelation when I think about saving the best for last. Don't let the book of Revelation scare you. It's a powerful book. And in it, we win. The ending of our story has already been written. Like if you want to know what your life will look like, it's written right for us. You and I will be engaged in a cosmic battle with God, with Jesus leading the way. We will witness God binding Satan up and tossing him into the lake of fire. We will watch that happen. We will be a part of that if you're a Christ follower. But again, there's room on both sides, church. Are you with me? It's a conclusion to the story. How, how, will your, how will this Sunday conclude for you today? I think when I think about saving the best for last, I guess the greatest thing I could think of was God saving Jesus for the cross. I mean, right? The first Adam couldn't do it. So God gave us Jesus. And what did, what did Jesus say? What were his last words? Say it if you know it. It is finished. You talk about a conclusion. You talk about you can't come to any other conclusion other than that. There is no sequel. There is no other movie. Jesus said, it is finished. I'm finishing it. I'm concluding it. It's over. I'm saving the best for last. Stand to your feet, family. Father, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to be in your house to worship you, to glorify you. Lord, you and I know the truth to what I'm about to say. You and I have been praying for this moment. We have been talking about them. I've been praying about your sons and daughters, my friends here today. And this moment of solidarity with our heads bowed, and it's a way for us to bring reverence to the moment. Nothing magical happens when we bow our head. It's just a a way I can get us to be in unity in the moment together. Watching church online, we have a pastor with you, communicating with you during the whole service. We'd love nothing more than to pray with you too. If you're in the room, you're watching online somewhere, number one, you've never made a public declaration that you want Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Romans 10, 10, 9 says, if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus Christ, if we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says we're saved. And you have an opportunity to enter into my family, into the kingdom of God today. Number two, if you're in the room, and as James 5, James 5 says, you, you've strayed from the faith. Maybe you grew up in church, and you're finding, you're, you're navigating your way back. Maybe you've been driving by, and you've been seeing the awesome crowd of cars out there, and you're like, God, I, I need to stop in that place. And you feel the tug today. You want to make things right with God. You've, you've gone out in the world, you've lived a life that has just turned you away from God. And like the prodigal son, you're, you're, you're navigating your way back to the one place you know you can always turn. I'm gonna count to three. If that is, fits you in e- either way, maybe for the first time, maybe you're nav- navigating back, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand and just keep it up long enough because it is so important that I personally see you, please. One, two, three. Just raise your hand right where you are. Church online, thank you. Thank you. I see you. Thank you so much. Please keep them up till I see you. Thank you. I thank you, my man. I see you. Come on, family. We can, these are over here. Thank you, Mark. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to miss you. Right here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Is there anyone else? Right here. Thank you. I see you. Thank you for keeping your hand up. Thank you. Amen. Robbing hell, making heaven crowded, amen. Church on, again, you can participate. We have, a, we have a pastor communicating with you. Would love nothing more to pray with you today. Is there anyone else? I don't wanna rush you, I, no pressure, just wanna give you space. Oh, thank you so much, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Amen. 
So Father, thank you for these hands that went up. That's between you and them. I can't change myself or anyone else. That is only through the blood of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit today. For those that are raising their hand for the first time, this isn't the finish line, this is the starting line. It's the beginning to a new life. So we say welcome to the family. We're so glad to have, there's a seat at the table for you. For those that are re returning to the faith or, or, or reaffirming their faith today, we say welcome back, we saved you a seat. We're to confess our sins to you. We're to believe that you died a real death in three days you rose from a real grave, conquering death in the grave. And now you sit in heaven at the right hand of God, preparing a place for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, amen. Let's give Jesus a praise one more time. Amen. Listen, real quick before you go, please, please do not move yet. I need you to do two things. Number one, if you need prayer, these are, these are the people that pray with me. And they would love nothing more than to pray with you today and speak God's word over you, okay? And come to agreement with what you need today. Number two, if you raise your hand, I have some amazing friends in the back. They're holding up signs that said, you said yes. Please, please, please stop by. Let them shake your hand. Let them give you a hug. We love you so much. Do me a favor, bring somebody, bring a family with you next Sunday to hear my friend Toby Slough. You will be blessed, I promise. We love you. See you next week.